Jane Huger. And look at this. Now, co comedian Jimmy Dore is with us. He joins us live in the studio. Jimmy, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, it's great to have you. Jimmy's uh, had a one-hour uh, Comedy Central special that was chosen Best of 2008 on iTunes. Yes, it He's was. He's on KFP, uh, KPFK here in L.A., Wednesdays at 3 and 4. He does comedy and everything else, which is interviews with other comedians on iTunes. Jimmy's blown up. So, first, Jimmy, I want to find out a little bit more about where you're coming from. W where did you start out? Oh, I started from in Chicago. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I come from 12 kids in my family, so that was... Jesus, uh, what are yeah. you guys, Irish or something? It's like if my dad liked kids so much, why didn't he become a priest? The point is, uh, I, we grew up Catholic. Uh -huh. You know, I went to school for 12, get Catholic school for 12 years. Uh -huh. And people ask me, they go, if you, you, you went to Catholic school for 12 years, how come you're not a Catholic? It's because I went to Catholic school for 12 <laughs> years. I had it beaten out of me by God's little helpers. <laughs> Did they really beat you? Back then they did. I mean, I'm you know I went to Catholic school in the late seventies, early eighties, and uh, yeah, they especially yeah especially high school. How, how would they beat you? Whether the nuns would like to. The Everyone rulers? had their own little way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm curious about because I never got beaten. Some of them That's would hit you with the, the rosary beads, with the ruler. I had a, a brother, Christian brother, who had a piece of big rubber, like he ripped it off of a tire, and he would make you stick your hand out, and he would hit you as hard as you he could, and then you could feel that for like eight hours. You could feel that on your hand. No, you know what? That that dude likes it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, when he saw that piece of rubber, he's like, oh, this is good. I'm going to beat people with this. <laughs> you know, yes. like, you got to be into it to find a piece of rubber on the road and think, I'm going to beat kids with this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, the Christian brothers weren't all bang. They were like the Nazis without the compassion. I mean, they were good people, but they're... <laughs> <laughs> so you're not Catholic anymore? I don't, I don't practice religion anymore. Okay. All right. Well, you're in L.A. now. That makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. I'm a, he, I'm a liberal, I'm a limp, lily livered lefty. So. <laughs> God bless you. So you're eating sushi, you're driving a Volvo, that's what's happening, right? <laughs> yeah, I drove my, my, drive my hybrid over here, sure. Yeah, all right. So um, you started out in Chicago. Uh, how did just, I'm always curious as to how people progressed and how they made it and stuff like that. So how'd you, how'd you get the, when did you move over to L.A.? How did you get the comedy special on, on Comedy Center? Oh, okay. Well, I moved out, and I started in Chicago, just went to an open mic like a lot of people start, but that was the real boom time for comedy. And uh, so it was easy to start working right away, so I got work right away. It was right when I got to college, I didn't want to get a job, so I started doing comedy. And they paid. It paid pretty well right away, you know. Uh -huh. and, uh, and they then, did, oh, I'm sorry, let me break that down for a second. Like, how do you get paid in comedy? <laughs> like you go to stand up and they pay you for the stand up. No, I'm curious. You know, mostly it seems we, like it's a hard racket. Mostly we sell drugs to our friends. But uh, no, okay, that's no, no. something. <laughs> no, it, it started. You know, there's lots of. Uh, when I started, it was the boom time for comedy. So in, in Chicago, there were 14 full time comedy clubs alone when I started. Jesus. So if you could stand up, you could pretty much get paid. And then you know what? Uh, it's pretty lucrative. It's, uh, it got pretty lucrative pretty fast, and then it stopped. And then I, that's when I moved to L.A. And the comedy boom stopped, and I was like, okay, it's done here. So I moved to Los Angeles in 95 to try to get on TV, and it worked out, son of a gun. Huh, all right. So, and then I, I did a couple of specials for Comedy Central, and I've been, you know, on all kinds of stuff on Comedy Central. So who, who hooked you up with that? Was it an agent? I'm just curious as to how this Oh, how happened. does that happen? Yeah. Yeah, I had an agent, but they, they become aware of you. You know, they see you at festivals, and I was invited to the Montreal Festival, which is a big deal, and the Aspen Festival, and HBO used to do that, and that was a big deal. And that's where everybody gets to see you. So if you have one, I remember the first show I did at the Aspen Festival was me, Lewis Black, Joe Rogan, Judah Friedlander. And uh, that was before anybody knew who Judah Friedlander was, or me. Right. And uh, so I got seen on that show, and then, oh, everybody thinks this Jimmy Dore is hilarious, and that's how that happened. And then Comedy Central calls, and... And uh, how much do comedians hang out with one another? Because you see, like, I saw that movie about comedians. Uh -huh. What was that with the... Um, do you remember what I'm talking about? The almost like documentary where they all tell the same joke. Oh, yeah, that was... Uh, uh, the Cosmopolitan or something? No, the, it's... Uh, the Metropolitan <laughs> something. I don't know. Anyway... I'll think of it in a second, but... But they all seem like they're, like, the greatest friends or something. Is there some sort of, like, comedian cult... <laughs> Well, their comedians are my favorite people to hang out with. Like, that's, to me, the greatest part about being a comedian is that you get... Like, I, I divide the world in between comedians and civilians. Like, that's how I look at it. <laughs> you know, because we just, we're, we just have a different... Like, you know, like, not all comedians, just like all talk show hosts aren't the same. Some are people you don't want to be with. Oh, no, no, almost all of them. <laughs> I mean, never hang out. Never. But, uh -huh. uh, but you know, and Russia's going to move to a place without... That's his criteria is no health care. 
Where, yeah. where, where is there to go? Where's he going to go? Yemen? Where's he going to go? <laughs> and that's what the, oh, nobody's getting health care. I am so happy. I know I get off the subject, but I just, that just blows my mind. All right, so let's talk about that, because you're, you're a solid-ass lib, okay, as, as it turns out. Um, well, so, I like to think of myself as a free thinker. I'm certainly not a Democrat. All right, hey, bless your heart. Okay. okay you've come to the right place. Barack Obama broke my heart. Tell me about that. Oh, I thought he was, you know, I believed him, you know, and uh, I thought he was going to do what he said he was going to do, and then he didn't. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, but here's the big, here's, you want to solve the health care problem, here's how you do it. You say everybody who has been denied or can't, you can buy into Medicare. You can buy into it. Hello? And, I mean, has this guy come to the right place? And, and I wrote an article about that. And, and I'm if like, you, that's it. And here's, well, here's my problem with it. I could hope it would, it would do three things. It would fix the problem. It would uh, do it for cost because people are buying in. And third, it would, it would uh, can make sure that there would be Democratic majorities in Congress for decades, and it would make him one of the best presidents ever. They'd put him on Mount Rushmore. So you have to ask yourself, why doesn't he do it? Well, that's exactly the question I was going to ask you. So what do you think? Why doesn't he the do it? The only answer I can come up with is he's one of them. Uh-oh. And that's where the disappointment comes from. Yes. Okay. He never wanted it in the first place. I, you know, people will, other people will say to me, well, he had to make a deal with the farmer. He did, they, they learned wrong lessons from Bill Clinton. They were in the long You don't base your reform on the people who are screwing up the system in the first place. You know, we all know what the, you know, I, I like to go on Facebook and stuff and stuff. And it's like these people are like, the government can't run anything. And I said, you, you just ask them the question, what is the most efficient health care service in the country that is the most popular? It's Medicare. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they can't, they go, yeah, but the doctors don't like I don't care what the doctors like. I know which is the customer service, is the approval ratings highest for Medicare, and it's the most efficient one we have. So why don't we use that? Except though, it, there might be one better in terms of how much people like it, and that's veterans care. Mm -hmm. And veterans care is totally socialist. Yes. The doctors, the hospitals, everything's government run. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. So it makes you kind of go, hmm, why are they not going in this direction? But if he's one of them, let's break that down a little bit. Because, I mean, you're talking my language. I mean, this is almost what we okay. say every single day on the show. But how is he one of them? And that's what I struggle with, right? I don't think he's like some evil guy who knew he was lying all along and la, 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 la. But, but right. at the same no. time, he's like, he's convinced himself that you could only get a little bit of change. I, I guess that's what yes. I'm going do, do you think it's more nefarious than that? or No. No, I think, but, you know, I mean, he was the editor of the, the law review, you know, Harvard. So, of course, he's, his mindset, he is what, he is that, of that, so, but he also knows what it's like to be on the south side of Chicago. So, but he is a centrist. And you have to, you know, that's the thing about when I watch Joe Scarborough, which I love that show, just because if you want to find out what the wrong position on any issue is, just turn in. <laughs> and they're going to give it to you in, in spades, right? And they're going to yell it at you. <laughs> I like that. They're going to yell at you the wrong the, position. The wrong position. <laughs> right. So the, I don't even know what I was talking about with that, why I even brought that up. But uh, it, Barack Obama... The, establishment, you know, that he, Harvard Law Review. And, yeah. You it, know, and, and, and so you're saying, it, like, centrist, he's been there too long. The problem with centrists is, that, is they're smug about it, too. Like, they think they, they're better than you. Oh, I'm not. The left and the right are crazy. I'm in the middle. Well, let me tell you something. Never, nothing great was ever achieved by a guy trying to reach consensus, okay? And we know it's called the, the founding fathers, not the floundering fathers, who would, you know, it's the Declaration of Independence, not the Declaration of Getting Along. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, it's, you know, when, when, when Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address, he didn't start out with, hey, you know, the South has some great ideas. Okay. <laughs> well, look, I, you know, there, there's a lot of truth to that. And it's, you know, I'm reminded of Alexander the Great, gets the Gordian knot, right? And they're like, well, you got to figure out how to untie this thing, and when you do, that that's the guy who's going to conquer Asia. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you guys all think about it. He takes out a sword and just chops it and goes, okay, now I'm through. Okay, and he goes and conquers Asia. Okay, and Obama would look at that knot for hours and <laughs> days and weeks, and he'd be like, hmm, how do we get Republicans to help us untie this knot? Okay, and sometimes you think, some of them a bitch, grab the sword and cut the goddamn thing and go through, well, right? People are hoping he's learned that lesson now, which, uh, you know, he's, you know, John F. Kennedy said it's better to judge a man not by the friends he's made, but by the enemies he keeps. And that's why the people who he's been trying to work with are completely marginalized now, and yet he still wants to pretend he's reaching. People know that they're crazy. And people are, by the way, already liking the health care bill more because now they're, oh, there's really reforms in it. There really are reforms in it. The problem is it's the, the central core of it is based on a private health insurance. 
Uh, right, I, and I agree with the downsides of the bill. Uh, but the reason that people didn't know the upsides is because the press never told them. Right. No, the media drives me crazy, and you're exactly right about Scarborough. There is no program. Not that Scarborough runs a program that's the most wrong. No. He, he runs a program that is conventional wisdom. Yes, con that's right. exactly and, mm -hmm. and, and so that's why you, if you want to figure out what conventional wisdom guys, Mark Halper and all those guys, they go and they spew their talking points. And eight out of ten of them are straight from the Republican National Committee, and they put them on air. And so it, I know, it drives me crazy, too. All right, now, so you do something called Tuesdays with Moron. What is that, Jimmy? <laughs> well, Tuesdays with Moron, it's based on um, my brother. And, uh, oh, really? Well, my brother's one of those guys who... Uh, you know, there's this thing called hegemony, where it's where there's the ruling class gets us to internalize their values, and the way they're doing it is through the media, right? So, consequently, I have a brother who makes fifty thousand dollars a year who worries about the estate tax. <laughs> this, come on, but you got to explain to him. You know, no, like, so you know. I, yeah, I'm at his house one day out of nowhere. He goes, "Hey, we got to get rid of that estate tax." I'm like, oh, "What are you talking about?" He says, "Well, that's if you die and you have millions of dollars, the government takes half of it." Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's horrible. Let me know when that becomes a problem for you, and I'll organize a rally. But until then, maybe you should turn off the Rush Limbaugh and get invited to your own life. Because I don't know if you check, but not many estates have two cars that don't work on the front lawn. Okay? I don't know if that's an estate. <laughs> I love the idea of your brother's estate. So how, what, what's to... What does he do on Tuesday? So, so, so what it was, was it would be like these conversations I would have with my brother... And I just turned it into this character called Moron, and he calls me every Wednesday, but it's called Tuesday because he's a moron. He misses the day, the call. <laughs> and his preamble is usually, hi, Jimmy, you know that I'm a good American. I uh, always vote against my own economic interests, and I always follow my government leaders without question unless they have to be a Democrat or a black. <laughs> so that's pretty much what, and then he, like, but he'll ask, quite, like, he listens to Sean Hannity, and it doesn't make sense to him. He goes, now, Sean Hannity says that we always have care, uh, that I could go down to the emergency room to get care, but my wife's gynecologist doesn't work at the emergency room. He is he for real? I mean, is he real? No. But this is the stuff, so he'll, uh, it's a good way, like, he's the ignorant guy, that we, right. he's the tea party guy, uh -huh. then we inform him, and usually at the end, he's like, oh, I didn't know that, and then he gets in an argument with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love the concept. And is that the one that's on KPFK? Yeah, it's on KPFK. So I, that's a segment we do on the Jimmy Dore Show on KPFK. All right. So uh, you got KPFK, Wednesdays at 3 and 4, but that's yeah. also on iTunes, right? Yeah, it's on iTunes. That's, I get a lot of bot podcast listeners from that show. Right. Mm -hmm. And also on iTunes is comedy and everything else. Yes, comedy okay. and everything else, which is where I interview other comedians like Norm MacDonald, David Spade, uh, Brian Regan, Jim Gaffigan, uh, Sarah Silverman, Paul of Tompkins, people like that. All right, fantastic. So everybody check out Jimmy Dore on iTunes and on K KPFK here in Los Angeles. Thanks so much for coming in. We hey, really thanks appreciate for having it. me. That was All great. Right. Thank you.